you will not benefit. The good thing, if you have a better vasodilatation, you have a better blood supply to the tissue. You will have a better oxygen supply to the tissue. So some people really feel physically more active or fitter because there's more nutrients brought to uh, the tissue, especially uh, the, the, the muscle used. And this is also a reason why you see a better perfusion of the skin. Uh, yeah. So we have, we have tested that, of course, in not in healthy people. That is difficult. You can't make, make healthy people much healthier. With the uh, laser Doppler instruments, you can actually measure at the skin level the speed of the blood because there the erythrocytes are exposed and you can measure in millimeters per second how fast the bl blood is, is traveling. And we tested that in people who had diabetes. Uh, of course, in, uh, in the foot, they often have these ulcers. And we investigated the healing of the ulcers. So the ulcer uh, healing was, was improved. And, of course, not in the wound, but around the wound, they measured the skin veloci velocity by laser Doppler. And you could see that the blood flow speed is improving. So by virtue of that, you bring more oxygen to the tissue. This was done uh, six weeks treatment, and this published in thrombosis and hemostasis. You can also measure the partial pressure, the pressure around the wound of carbon dioxide and oxygen. If you have a better perfusion, the oxygen will go up and the carbon dioxide goes down because the blood brings more oxygen-rich blood and carries away the carbon dioxide-rich waste. So uh, this is a very interesting uh, phenomenon. Uh, if you have people with uh, venous ulcers or diabetic ulcers, you can, you can speed up the healing process. Yeah, and we did another study in Dusseldorf in Germany on women at higher age. Again, we investigated for beauty effects, of course, women at higher age, because there you can better identify an improvement of the elasticity and the smoothness of the skin. We did this study actually because this was the first time where we had access to a biopsy. So the treatment of the skin in such studies is always under the arm because you try to uh, avoid that they expose it to UV light because this will disturb uh, the findings you have. And the greatest problem with women is actually to get them to agree that they don't use any cosmetics on the arm. So no cream, so you have to keep it completely clean. And we took biopsies, but of course not here, from the buttocks, as it is often done, because we wanted to see what actually happens inside the skin when people take pycnogenol orally. But they were paid, they were compensated for that, of course. Nobody does that voluntarily. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go, we tested uh, the skin hydration. That was new, we didn't know that before. Does it improve the hydration? We again uh, did the elasticity and smoothness, like we did uh, similar as we did in the Evel study with PharmaNord. And the density, over 12 weeks. And as mentioned, we wanted to, because also the marketing people wanted to know, what does it do in, in, the, in the skin? We wanted to know what really happens, because we, people want to understand why. It's always nice if you have better skin elasticity. Well, you know, why? So we investigated the collagen synthesis and hyaluronic acid synthesis in the skin with biopsies. So the first thing, this study confirmed what we found with the Evel study, the skin does get more elastic. You can measure this by the q meter. Uh, it works in the same way as we did this previously with Evel. This is published in Skin Pharmacology and Physiology. We also found that was previously unknown, a better skin hydration. Though in all reality, those women who had accident skin hydration at study start didn't improve further. So you basically see this women having dry skin, they benefit from pycnogenol with a, a greater hydration of the skin. The most fascinating to me, probably because I'm a biochemist, <laughs> is what happens inside the skin. They found in these women a 40% increase, that is a lot, of collagen type 1 synthesis. So they have done this uh, with PCR tests to see which genes going up, which proteins are produced more. There's more collagen produced 
and the hyaluronic acid synthase. The hyaluronic acid synthase is the enzyme naturally producing hyaluronic acid in our skin. And this, the enzyme is increased by 44%. So this enzyme is naturally producing more hyaluronic acid and this highly charged macromolecule is the one that binds the water. So that is probably why you see a smoother skin because if there's more humidity bound in the skin, it is more pulp. And that is probably why we see greater skin hydration, especially in those women who have dry skin. So this was a very, very fascinating outcome of this study. Here in Thailand, you have a nice high humidity, so usually you don't have that much of a skin dryness problem, but in Europe that is a problem. Uh, the heated rooms, this, the, uh, the uh, humidity in the air is very, very low. So for them, you can see it very nicely. So Dr. Pensak has already covered the dysmenorrhea area, so I can probably uh, cut that short. We have, as I mentioned, the metabolites and leukocytes decrease the likelihood for uh, pro-inflammatory processes. So you have a significant anti-inflammatory effect of pycnogenol. And dysmenorrhea, actually the menstrual period itself, is, involves inflammatory, pro-inflammatory uh, pathways. And decreasing the inflammation makes the life for women much, much easier. So these were the initial studies. These were all done in Japan. In Japan, pycnogenol is particularly famous for women. It's a typical women's product there. So uh, you've seen all these slides already. Yeah, so I don't need to, re to repeat the uh, dysmenorrhea because Professor Pensak 